Hi, my name's Annette Densham from Publicity Genie. I've just been on the online prosperity show and Prosper and I have been talking about humility, modesty and authenticity and how that can help you or hinder you in your business. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today... For the second time around, we've brought you the publicity genie, Annette. Annette, how are you doing, my love? Prosper, I am awesome because I'm talking to you. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much. If you keep doing that, I might not just be humble. And talking about humility, this is what we're going to be talking about today. How humility is actually going to be helping your business or you not uh, tooting your own horn is a detriment to that. Now, the reason why I've brought in uh, this topic and the person who's actually going to be talking about it is because Annette is recognized, um, you know, with national and international PR awards. And she actually works with startups and micro businesses because everyone can use their stories for great content to connect with the media and beyond. She has been involved within the world of journalism from a tender age of 15 and she's been hooked on sharing other people's stories. Now, in the process, she has met people who have um, been tooting their own horn to success and those people that have been uh, humbling themselves uh, and not really uh, expressing how good they are to those that actually need their services. And let us actually be honest. We, as business people, we want things from other people, but it depends on, do these people know us? Do they like us? Do they trust us? And how do we um, appear to other people in order for us to get what it is that we want? And especially businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Now, Annette, I could go on and on um, and, and, and talk about all the accolades that you've gotten, all the press that you've gotten for other people, and maybe Toot your horn, but I think you're the best person to do that for yourself. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with uh, Publicity Genie. Sure. Oh, my God, 15. That, like, seems so long ago. And I know I only look 25, but it was actually, I'm 48 fit now. So that was a long time ago. So, basically, I came into Publicity Genie because... I lost my job and, you know, for most of my life, I've either worked as a journalist or in corporate communication, so with words and with storytelling. And when I lost my job, it was like, oh, what am I going to do now? And you know, this goes towards our topic is I, I had to acknowledge what my expertise is or was, it still is. And I had to embrace that because if I was going to build a business, I had to get good at telling people what it is that I do because I no longer had the backing of a, you know, big budget or, you know, a team of people that could help me. And, and I mean, like, and I know a lot of people go, oh, my God, it's just easy for you because you work in PR, you know how to write. But I'm still a human being and I'm still, you know, like hard to believe I'm, I've been, a, I was a shy kid and I know it's hard to believe. But this, I've learnt to be outgoing because in business, if I didn't learn to toot my own horn and share what it is that I could do, nobody would have known I existed. So um, Publicity Jenny was born and she was born because I love telling stories and it's, it's to me it's actually a really deep honour to have someone share their story and allow me the opportunity and privilege of, of sharing that with more people. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for that, uh, you know, introduction of yourself there. Now, I mean, Annette, you would understand, uh, we've, we've known each other for quite a while and we've, you know, transacted in, in, in ways that um, have, you know, brought our personal uh, lives sort of close knit. Now, there happens, um, you know, a, a time in people's businesses where, you get to know somebody and you get to know their real and authentic self. And then there's that persona that they want to project, we, um, um, you know, into the public eye. Now, do you think that authenticity has to be something that is cultivated or is something that comes from within? Definitely something that comes from within. 
if you need to cultivate authenticity, then you've kind of missed the point and the definition of the word authentic because you, you can't pretend to be something you're not. You can't pretend to be, you know, this, you know, warm superstar of whatever it is that you're doing if you're actually painfully shy and introverted. But there's still, you know, something that is attra attractive and marketable about being that shy introvert. Like a, a friend of mine, Sally, just released a book about marketing for introverts. Now, you would think marketing and introverts really, not marketing, networking and introverts really wouldn't go. But, you know, we're all after that, that human connection and there is no reason that if you're an introvert or if you are shy that you can't be authentic in your storytelling because there are other people out there that would relate to that. So if you're putting on a face, putting on a mask, you know, like just showing everything that's sunshine and rainbows when it actually really isn't, people will see through that. Uh, I truly believe that, that you can only masquerade as someone else for so long before people go, aha, I caught you out, that, that mask slipped. I knew that, that you weren't perfect. <laughs> so when you're presenting your story or on social media or on podcasts or whatever it is that you're doing, you have to be yourself. And that comes with, I think, a whole lot of personal work that you sometimes have to do between here and here because really in business, you know, we talk about, oh, I don't have enough money to do marketing or I don't have this skill or I don't have that. But most of the time what's holding us back is what's going on between our ears. If, if you just believe and that you know with certainty that what you're doing, the problems that you're solving for your clients is the best that you can offer, that you can make a difference in the world, surely that's enough belief for you to go, you know what, people need to know about this. Like I am the best thing since sliced bread without being big, big headed. But I can help you. And so many people I see is like, oh, like I've really got nothing to say or, you know, it's just, it's all fear-based. If we can let that go, then it's amazing how business can take off. Absolutely. I absolutely like that. <clears throat> now, I've also found out that um, our market here in Australia, we don't have that much playground, you know, so that means we end up uh, knowing each other as business people or have heard of other people um, as business people. Now, is that the reason why a lot of people are really shy to step out of their game because they're afraid everybody now knows who they are or who they were before and are not really stepping up in, 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 in the person they have become, um, you know, in, in, in a way. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think once you put yourself out there, you've then exposed um, in a good way or a bad way, however you want to look at that. For the introverts, they're kind of like going, oh, my God, like, you know, a vampire in the sun. Oh, I'm burning. Um, for an extrovert, it's like, yeah, baby, here I am. Look at me. And then there's eyes on you. And like you said, Australian small business community is very small. And if we don't personally know people, we've heard of them or we know someone who's heard, heard of them, I think it's almost like maybe two degrees of separation in Australian small business community. And then comes with that all of the fear and the worry and the anxiety about, well, if I achieve something, where do I go from there? How can I continue to keep achieving again and again and again? And if I don't keep achieving again and again and again, are people going to think I'm a loser and that I've lost it or that I'm not capable of doing that? And it goes back to what we're talking about with authenticity and being real is that if we can accept that in business, you're going to have your good days and you're going to have your bad days and that we can share both sides of our journey. We become more instantly more relatable to people who are looking to connect. You know, like it, it, it constantly blows me away because, you know, I'm pretty forthright with what I think about things. You know, I share the good and the bad. I don't have a problem with that. You know, I share my personal life. I share my professional life, you know, within reason. Like I, 
you know, I don't, I'm not going to tell you about the fight I had with my husband the other weekend over <laughs> whatever it was. We didn't have a fight. But if I did, I wouldn't be sharing that with you because that's deeply personal. But when I meet people, I had this lady say to me the other day, oh, my God, she said, I almost feel like, like I know you, I'm a bit of a fangirl and I don't want to sound like a stalker, but I've been following you for years and I love what you do on social media. And it was like, you know, wow, that's, that's good because so many people are watching, they're not interacting, they're just watching. And you just never know who you're going to influence by standing out there and, and shining the light on yourself, good and bad. Because, like, let's face it, like, really, who's perfect? Hands up all of those of you who are perfect. No one is. And when we see someone who is always slick, always together, like, I kind of roll my eyes and go, really? Like, really? Everything's peachy for you, is it? And I lose a little bit of, I don't know, trust in them because it's like, I don't think that you're being honest with me. And then when you meet them and it's like they look tired and haggard and it's like, why aren't you sharing that part of your journey with me? Because I could actually really be inspired by that because I've had a crappy week and I need to know that this person that I'm looking up to is not having a good time either. Absolutely. <clears throat> I love that aspect that, you know, wherever we are, we definitely are being watched not not per se in those words i don't really want to scare the introverts but all <laughs> eyes <laughs> on you <laughs> you know some somebody is paying attention so we better make um a good representation of of who we absolutely are now in in what you've mentioned um one of the things that actually cripples people from uh, going ahead, um, you know, you know, maybe it's in their business or in actually serving their clients. You mentioned um, something to do with perfectionism. How much of that is sort of crippling people from uh, putting out a, 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 a press release or a media release or signing up for uh, awards or, you know, international or, or local awards, the, the whole, uh, you know, oh. idea of being perfect? so much it's so much like uh, and, and I get it because I used to be a perfectionist and I'd labor over something and now it's like you know what I could sit here all day and make sure that this is perfect but it's never going to be for whatever reason so I'm just going to get it out and I've done workshops with people that you go back and you speak to them a month later and you go um, you never got your media release draft back to me. Why not? Oh, well, I'm still working on it. It's like, dude, it's 400 words. Seriously, just write it, send it back to me. Like if you never send it out, how is anybody ever going to know what you're doing? If you're sitting there like procrastinating over putting in an award because you don't think that you've done enough or, you know, you're worried that you don't dot all the I's and cross all the T's, then it's never going to happen. I think perfectionism is the bane of a small business's um, of life and progress because, like, oh, I understand that we don't want mistakes and but when we do make mistakes, if we can accept that, We've made a mistake. It's, you know, the, the world is not going to stop turning. The sun is not going to stop shining. Maybe one or two people might go, I'm not working with that person again because they spelt this wrong or they used the wrong tense. It was like, seriously? Okay, you're going to get over that. I'm going to get over that. So, you know, like I always think back to something that um, Stephen Hawking said. I was watching a documentary and he was talking about the formation of the universe. And he said, you know what, for the universe to have been formed, there are a whole lot of things that went wrong. So if you're sitting there expecting to be perfect, the universe isn't perfect. So if it was perfect, you and I wouldn't be here. And I was like, wow, that was and he said it much more eloquently than I did, but it was really profound right. because it's like we're all striving to have our hair right, write the perfect social media post, write the perfect award application, the perfect media release, the perfect blah, 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 whatever it is. And yet 
the universe isn't perfect. Why do we think that we should be? And it's crippling us, this, this journey of perfection. Instead, get it out there. You know, as long as, like, I'm not talking about you've got 60 mistakes in your piece, but if you've missed off a comma or whatever, who cares? At the end of the day, people are doing business with people. They're not doing business with your comma. <laughs> I like that. They're not doing business with your, <laughs> with your comma right there. We live in a world of emojis, so maybe you might have put a, the different emoji on um, you know, your press release and you know, people don't like it that way. So now that you've mentioned, obviously, like you say, the universe is not perfect. Um, people got to, you know, be centered and be authentic and, you know, bring themselves out there because you cannot be the world's biggest secret. What then happens with, you know, us living in Australia like this, where tall poppy syndrome is so rife, like you said earlier on, people are fertilizing it. How do we then circumvent, um, you know, that social aspect and social anxiety that just happens without noticing, um, you know, that somebody is always just going to bring you down just because it makes them feel better? I think that comes down to personal growth. I mean, I'm looking at your beautiful bookshelf behind you and, you know, and I know over the years and I think we've, oh gosh, we've known each other for maybe six years. I remember interviewing you for the YMAG way back when and, and hearing your story and, you know, hearing about how you'd grown and how you'd prospered, <laughs> no pun intended. But you read a lot. You're always working on yourself. You're always looking at a way to, you know, improve who you are and how you think. And that's key for any human being, whether you're in business or not. And this tall poppy thing comes because we feel inadequate about ourselves and we feel inadequate about ourselves because we haven't done the work between our ears. So when we look at, you know, a beautiful girl walking down the street with a gorgeous figure and beautiful hair, so many women will go, oh, look at that bitch. Like, she's, who does she think she is? <laughs> Instead of going wow, look at her, isn't she an absolutely glorious human being? She must work really hard to have that body good on her instead of coming from a place of scarcity. And that's where we're coming from when we, when we succumb to tall poppy syndrome is we're coming from scarcity. We're fearful of what we don't have, so we want to take it away from other people. So I think the best thing, and look, and I've been there. I used to do that. Like, I look at her, you know, and say horrible things about people. And now I catch myself. And it's like, you know what? Who am I to judge? Because I'm not perfect. How do I know? And I say this to my kids all the time. How do you know what that person's going through? Why can't we just go good on you? So when someone wins an award, and I've heard it at networking where people have gone, you know, that person has achieved something and it's like, oh, well, do you know what she did to get there or, you know, whatever it is. How about you go, who cares? Congratulations. Like, what a great job. Good on you. That's amazing because we are going to continually hinder ourselves. So, you know, when they say, you know, the the best like revenge is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. That's what tall poppy syndrome is. It's like swallowing Roundup and then expecting that poppy to die, but it's actually killing you more than it is that person. And we need to move away from that competitive space in business. Like there's, there's no room for it anymore. It's, it's hindering our growth and move into a collaborative space where we support each other and we encourage each other and encourage each other. And yes, okay, you may be in the same industry as me. You may have similar clients to me, but you know what? You're not me. I'm not you. You do things differently to me and we will appeal to the people who will appeal to us. And that will help us overcome this tall poppy. But it has to start one person at a time. I wish there was a magic wand that we could go, Stop being nasty, people. <laughs> but, but there isn't. And all you and I can do is say right here, right now, 
we're not going to do that. When you achieve something, I'm going to say, good on you, Prosper. I'm really proud of you. You're an awesome bloke. And you're going to say, oh, you won't say I'm an awesome bloke because I'd get upset. <laughs> but you're going to say, you know, congratulations, Annette, on your achievements. It's really awesome to watch because then we lift, we're lifting each other up. Let's stop putting people down. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate that, that aspect because a lot of people are not, you know, going or growing into their fullest, um, you know, capabilities just because they're afraid of the next person. Do you think all of this has to do with the environment that people might be in? And is there anything that somebody can do to, if, you know, if they become a big fish in a small pond to maybe jump into a bigger pond just so that they keep themselves, um, you know, in balance? I think it's really good to have a, a strong network of people around you, people who help keep you grounded, that people that you can go to and say, I'm struggling today or I've had this win. So you've got that really safe circle, you know, that inner circle of people who are supporting you. Because mm -hmm. when you work by yourself, you know, like if you look at the stats on small business, solo entrepreneurs it's something like 63 percent of businesses in australia are solo operators you and me and the people listening to this program are sitting there alone in their shed or in their office and we get caught up in our own heads because we no longer have the the, the people around us that we did in the corporate life to go oh i'm having a bad day let's go get a cup of tea or let's go for a walk and be able to bounce that off we have to be more proactive to do that. And, and I do know that, you know, I, I, I had stuff happen to me over the last 12 months and I withdrew from my community just because it was like, I'm really busy. I've got stuff going on. I can't be bothered going out. And then I realised how isolated I'd become and how in my own head. And then I noticed that, you know, I wasn't getting as many clients as I normally did because my whole attitude had become inclusive rather than, uh, sorry, exclusive rather than inclusive. So I reached out to people and I went, you know, I'm not having a really good time. I need, I need, I need you to kick me up the backside or I need you to encourage me. So I think it's asking for help. Oh my God, there's another thing that when most of us are not very good at asking for help. It's like, oh, I've got to ask people for help. They're going to think that I'm a loser. <clears throat> but no, we don't. you know what I love the most? I love when people go, hey, Annette, can you help me with this? And, and I'm like, yes, I'd love to. You know, like I'm not going to do all the work for you, but I can point you in the right direction because that makes me feel good and it makes them feel good. I think that's a win-win. Absolutely. I like that uh, statement that you mentioned, you know, about asking for help because it, it takes a humble being to actually say, okay, I don't know this. I need to learn um, all of this in order for me to be able to be of service to other people. Now, just one other thing before we actually um, let you off there, uh, Annette. Um, if people are watching this right now and they're really keen on knowing more about how they can maybe get out of their shell or maybe consolidate all of this and start putting, you know, their stories out there and without the fear of um, the environment around them or the people around them. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Annette? The best way is email. So hello at publicitygenie.com -E um, and just put a big subject heading and I want to talk to you. Um, because I get a lot of emails. So if it stands out, then, you know, I check my emails all the time. That's the best way to get a hold of me. And just let me know what you need help with. Or, or even if you don't know what you need help with, sometimes just having a converse, like I do an obligation-free um, <laughs> consultation. I always laugh when it's obligation-free. You have no obligation to use my services. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just need a little bit of clarity. And I can say, geez, I can help you absolutely with that. Or I can go, you know, not my skill or expertise, but I know someone who this is their thing and I'm going to connect you with them because that's what comes from creating a community as well is that I am definitely don't have all the answers 
and my thing is writing business awards and writing stories, articles, media releases, but I'm not a coach, I'm not a mentor, although my husband keeps telling me that I am, so I should probably listen to him because he's a smart man um, because as I, I think about what I've just said here today, Prosper, and it's like, oh, my God, where's my soapbox? <laughs> I sound like I'm on a soapbox, but I'm really passionate about people sharing what it is that they do and what they've achieved and who they are because stories is just so magnificent and whether it's a written word or a spoken word or you know however it is that you communicate your story people want to hear they really want to hear it whether you think it or not we we're all looking to be inspired and motivated and encouraged by people that we look up to and you know why can't that be you Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> now, obviously, we've been talking about authenticity. We've been talking about, you know, humility as being the main theme of this show today. And also, we went on and dived into, you know, the environment and also, you know, the whole tall poppy syndrome uh, that's prevalent here in Australia. What's like the go-to advice that somebody would say, okay, thank you so much for offering me that opportunity to have a chat with you and, you know, what, what, what's like your go-to advice that you would give to people that are just knocking on your door right now? They don't quite know how they can present themselves that day. They don't quite know um, how they should be and, you know, what sort of persona they should project out there so that they have a business that's profitable and, and enjoyable or they're accepted by other humans uh, that want to do business with them. My advice is to be humble but don't be modest is jot down all the things and, and like do this even if you have to write somebody else's name that my dog is jumping on me because there's a thunderstorm here and he's scared so i'm just say say hello george hello puppy hey. um, <laughs> <laughs> he's shaking like oh you poor thing um is Sit down and like, even if you have to write someone else's name, so you write Frank is and brainstorm all the things that you're really good at. Brainstorm all the problems that you solve. Brainstorm all the ways that you help other people with your business. Um, and the other thing is, is contact five of your clients or colleagues and ask them what they think that you're really good at. And, you know, that's why we do PR is because we're looking for third-party credibility. Right. And when you go and ask people that you've either helped or who know you really well what's really good about you, you'll be really surprised at what they say and how they see you because you're not seeing that yourself. Sometimes we just need a little kick up the rear end to remind us that we are awesome. Um, and, and that's one of the things that when I talk to people is that I suggest that they do. Go off and do that. If there's one thing you do after our conversation is go touch base with your community. Just get them to feedback a little bit about how awesome you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, just, you know, wrapping it all up, um, you everybody is here to live, to learn and to contribute. And, you know, the, the life that you live is, has to be a life of contribution if you want to be fulfilled. So the more you share your story, the, sh the more you share your authenticity with other human beings, you inspire them, like what Annette has been saying, and also they too can now start having a happier existence. Now, Annette, I can't thank you enough. This is, we should make this a, um, a series, you know, like, you know, last year we did something, this year we're doing something. Um, so I'll hit you up again next year so we can have, um, you know, like a yearly video series that would actually be just giving out uh, content because you're always full of value and always willing to give. So thank you so much for that. Thanks, Prosper. That sounds like fun. I'll be in for that. Absolutely. Thank you.